Today, to celebrate the holidays, I'm making a chicken breast out of lion's mane mushroom stuffed with butternut squash and pomegranate with a champagne pomegranate sauce. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I had some friends over for dinner. We popped a bottle of champagne, but about half of it we didn't drink. And so I never know what to do. I got to keep coming up with these recipes. The original recipe was in the vegan meat cookbook and it featured a commercial chicken breast. But today I've substituted lion's mane mushroom for umami and succulents and this amazingly tender yet dense texture. This is a showstopper of a dinner for any holiday occasion. Pop the cork and celebrate Christmas or New Year's. Okay, we're going to start out by making the butternut squash filling for the lion's mane chicken. It's super, super simple. We're going to start out by peeling the butternut squash, uh, chopping some onions, throwing them on the sheet pan, and just and roasting them. That's it. That's how easy the filling is going to be. The chickens and the animals can all have that. Gotta get a spoon. I don't know about you, but um, it seems like I can never get through an entire bottle of champagne. We have guests over or whatever, and there's always that bottle of champagne left over that I have to do something with. So creating a wonderful, elegant sauce out of champagne. And by the way, if you don't drink alcohol, they have lovely non-alcoholic sparkling wines that you can use for this sauce now. Now we're going to cut these into cubes. Cut this part off to make it easier to chop. Fifteen point nine. So in other words, exactly under a pound. Can you say that exactly under a pound? Okay, it's close enough. In my fight against food waste, I found some uh, I found three halves of onions in my refrigerator. I don't know about yours, but it seems like somebody uses half an onion and then they just stick it in the refrigerator and then next time they don't use that, they go and get another onion. And so I found three halves and two halves make a whole, right? So we'll just dice these up. going to drizzle this with some olive oil, add some salt, a little pepper, mix this up. Spread it out and get it in the oven. Okay, I'm getting it in the oven with some dishes from another episode. Right now, the temperature is 425 for just about everything. And 400, 425, we're in the ballpark. I'm going to take this beautiful lion's mane and turn it into a wonderful chicken dish stuffed with butternut squash and covered in champagne sauce. So you want to make sure that your lion's mane doesn't have little things on them. Um, I found a big lion's mane growing off of a tree near me and it took me a really long time to clean it. Um, most of these are grown in a sanitary facility in, indoors. You can buy these lion's mane growing kits, but if you buy, if you happen to find one growing on a tree, uh, you have to make sure that you clean it thoroughly. All right, so we're gonna slice these into steaks. Slice it this way. Now these are gonna, they're thick right now, but they're gonna shrink down quite a bit. This one's not so great. We want to somehow keep it all together. So make sure you don't cut the stem off. Okay, so we're going to cook these first. After we cook them, we're going to season them. All right. The first thing we want to do is get some 
oil in a nice hot pan and we're gonna sear the lion's mane mushrooms on both sides and a lot of water is gonna come out and that is okay. But we want these to absorb some flavors and we gotta get rid of the water first. So we're gonna put these down in here. Now don't worry too much if your lion's mane falls apart into little florets because we are gonna be wrapping them all in yuba. There's gonna be a skin that will hold it all together. So that's okay if that happens. So keep your heat up medium high or so. And what we're gonna do is smash these down. So I have a cast iron skillet I'm gonna place on top. And that's gonna encourage the release of water from the mushrooms and flatten it out a little bit. Concentrating it so they're not so poofy, but they're denser, more meaty. Okay, once we flip it over, we're gonna put the pan back on top. You can see the water coming out of here. These big puffy mushrooms are shrinking down in size, becoming flatter, becoming denser, becoming chewier. Get the rest of these in there. Now you don't have to worry about the water that's being released. It's all going to evaporate and we want it to evaporate before we add the seasonings. Okie dokie. All right, we're ready to get started with the seasoning. Now, if you watch my episode on how to make your own homemade bouillon base, then you'll have a chicken bouillon on hand. Uh, but if you don't, you can use something like this. You can get something that comes in a jar. This is the better than bouillon. Uh, this is the chicken flavor. So you're gonna start out with a little bit of chicken flavor. I'm gonna add a little bit of my own homemade as well and some hot water to dilute it. I'm gonna add a tablespoon or so of nutritional yeast. A big fat clove of garlic. And the bouillon is pretty salty, so I think I can forego the salt. A tablespoon or two of some white wine. You can skip that if you like, or use some of the wonderful non-alcoholic wines that are coming on the marketplace. And a uh, little, little bit of olive oil. All right, we're gonna pour this over the lion's mane breasts and we'll take a look at them now and see how they're coming along. Look at that. The water is evaporating. We got to flip these guys over. There's still a little bit of water. When they start to stick is when we're ready to uh, deglaze the pan and have these absorb the wonderful marinade that we just made. So these are beginning to stick a little bit. We'll just move them along. There's not that much water left in the pan. I'm just gonna cook up the rest of the florets because I don't want to waste. There's very little water left in here. The lion's mane's beginning to stick. So we are ready now to pour the marinade on top and they will start to absorb it. And turn the heat up high and we're just going to let that simmer for a minute so that the steaks can absorb this lovely marinade and be infused with all this wonderful flavor.
And I think my lion's mane chicken breast is ready. So let me give it a taste. Mm. Well, you can serve that just as it is. It's so delicious. But we're going to make it even better. Stuffed with butternut squash and pomegranate and wrapped in a skin. All righty, we're now ready to stuff the lion's mane chicken breast with this butternut squash filling. You could saute this on the stovetop, but it's just so much easier to stick it in the oven with the onions and, uh, and then you, you, know, you can do something else rather than having to watch over the stove. So now we're gonna take this pomegranate and we're gonna throw a few of the pomegranate seeds. I think there's another word for it. This is such a pretty showstopper dish. I know some people are better at this than I am. I watched so many little YouTube and Instagram videos on how you take the seeds out of the pomegranate and I can, it's just one of those things I have just never been able to do. Yeah, I can dice, I can slice. Removing pomegranate seeds, not my strength. Okay, so I've gotten better at it though. You don't need a ton of this. I'm gonna get that mixture all done. Maybe a little more. A little bit of that acidic brightness from the pomegranate seeds coupled with the, uh, the sweetness of the butternut squash is absolutely perfect. In my tempura episode, we use yuba, which is the skin that forms on soy milk again. And this is a frozen yuba that I have just thawed and just dipped in water for a little bit. You don't want to over dip it. You don't want to over soak it actually, because unfortunately the yuba becomes too hard to deal with. So I'm going to just lay this out. What I did was that I just dipped it in some of that marinade that I cooked the, uh, the mushrooms in. That will flavor the yuba. Now I'm going to take some of this and I'm going to put some filling in here. You could make it really thick by adding another layer like that, but I'm, well, maybe we'll do that because I think I have enough. Okay, a smaller piece. And then we're gonna wrap it up in the Yuba. And hopefully this Yuba, unfortunately, is kind of messy. Here's a better piece there. Oop. And uh, we'll dip again. And we're just gonna rewrap that. It's okay if you have more than one layer of Yuba. Just means you have more skin. Okay, and then you wrap it as tightly as you can. You have a nice little packet there. And I'll put it in there. That's actually kind of big. So I think I'm not, I'm just gonna put the filling on top of the next one. In my book, uh, The Vegan Meat Cookbook, I have a recipe for this using, let's say a chicken breast, a vegan chicken breast that you'd get at the store. But what I've done today is I've substituted lion's mane mushroom for the chicken breast. Uh, so it, you know, it doesn't have, it's not a fake meat, quote unquote. Um, and uh, absolutely delicious. I mean, these are just so succulent and tender. I think I'm gonna do this. Go like this, get my filling in there, put this piece on top, and I'll have a slightly smaller chicken breast, but still a good size. Put a couple of smaller pieces on top. Ah, that looks perfect. This is the Chinese yuba that I get that's frozen, um, supposedly made from non-GMO uh, soybeans. And uh, you get it frozen at an Asian grocery store. Um, and then you just wanna kinda get it wet for a minute. And it looks like I need to make more of my little marinade. Traditionally, some of this chicken base. Some olive oil, which helps it to brown. A little white wine for flavor. You can use non-alcoholic or just use water. All right. 
I think I can make two more. And this one, I think we're just gonna leave off the top and it'll just be wrapped in the Yuba. There we go. Okay, so when you don't over soak the Yuba, it stays together much, much better. And this marinade will be used to marinate the, the chicken breasts as they come out of the oven and while they're baking to make sure that the skin is absolutely delicious. All right, let's uh, give these a little basting and then we'll get them in the oven. Well, I don't make this sauce very often, so I've got my uh, the vegan meat cookbook right here. I'm following my own recipe for the champagne pomegranate sauce. Uh, it's a special sauce. It's wonderful. It's what you do when you have leftover champagne, which only happens once in a while. All right, so I've got some butter in a deep saute pan, a little bit of olive oil too. And we're gonna start by sauteing some finely minced shallots. I have about a cup of finely minced shallots that are gonna go in there, along with uh, finely diced carrots. I'm gonna throw in a couple little cloves of garlic. I'm gonna add a little pinch of salt. I'm going to cover this so that it cooks faster too. And then we'll let it go for three or four minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to slice an apple. Uh, the apple is going to add a little sweetness to, this, to the sauce that will contrast beautifully with the wine or the champagne. So it doesn't matter. The apple's gonna get removed. All the veggies are gonna get strained out of the sauce. It really doesn't matter how you cut these. You can dice them if you like, whatever. It doesn't matter. So I'm gonna end up with some strained vegetables, which depending on the combination, I can turn into different things. I have one sauce that I make meatloaf out of. This one, I'll have to taste it. I think I could probably make a really light pate out of it, or it could be a treat for the pigs. All righty, we're ready to add the other ingredients. We're gonna add one and a half cups of vegan chicken broth. Once again, you can make it out of my brilliant bouillon recipe that you can find in another episode. And I've got my leftover champagne that I'm gonna finally use up. It's, oh my gosh, so I didn't have two cups of champagne left over. I only had a cup. All right, I've got the sliced apple. I'm gonna go find some more champagne or wine or something. I've got two criminy mushrooms that I've sliced up. These are actually very large ones. I'm gonna throw in two cloves of garlic, whole, peeled, but whole. And we've been drying our own herbs. So we have the California Bay laurel growing all over the yard. So I've got uh, that I'm throwing in. And this is some dried sage from, not sage, dried uh, thyme from last year. All of this is gonna get strained out so it doesn't really matter. Okay, and we're gonna cook this for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes or so, and then we're gonna throw in some, after we strain it, we're gonna throw in the pomegranate and the spinach. And while this is simmering, we're going to make some cashew cream with which we will thicken this whole thing. But first, I gotta find some more champagne. I was unable to find another bottle of opened champagne, but I did find this, which is a non-alcoholic sparkling wine. So I'm gonna open this because I'd like to enjoy it and we'll add a cup of this to my sauce. All right. A little for me, for the cook, and a little for the sauce. But it's great that there are all these non-alcoholic options today. I have gotten completely addicted to this non-alcoholic beer. I find I think it's the hops. The hops are really relaxing. So you can have a beer, feel relaxed, and not 
feel tipsy. It's fantastic. So yeah, love these options. All right, cheers. Mmm. Crisp apple is what comes to mind when I drink this. What do we have here today? So I need some chard for what we're making today. Uh, or spinach, I've got both growing. This is a beautiful bed of chard. So I'm just gonna cut off some leaves. There's small ones, really small and tender ones. There's big ones, the whole gamut. Chard is a perennial and it just keeps growing. It is the plant that just keeps giving. Um, we don't even plant it. It just comes back year after year after. In fact, all year long, we have this bed of greenery here. This is a Japanese vegetable called Mizuna that I absolutely love. You can put it in salad. In Japan, you often put it in a clear soup. Um, I'm going to pick some and I'll make a little salad with it for tonight. So this is some spinach that the kids planted. Uh, the kids that are part of the compassionate education program that we have here at Rancho Compassion. We have a wonderful garden director and the kids get their hands in the soil. They rub the bellies of pigs. It is a perfect experience for them. So this is uh, one type of spinach that I'm picking here. And right over here is a different type of spinach. This is called Malabar spinach. I don't know if it's really spinach or not, but it's got a slightly different texture. Uh, the stems are hard, so you have to peel the leaves off. It's uh, hardier and delicate at the same time. So we're gonna pick some of that and throw that into our dish as well. Look at all these greens. Oh yeah, this is looking nice. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. While the sauce is reducing, I'm going to puree a half a cup of cashews with one cup of water to make a lovely, heavy cream that will thicken the sauce. My sauce is reduced by about half, which is what you want. Uh, it's been about 25 minutes or so, and uh, it's pretty salty because I reduced it. We are going to thin it out with some heavy cream, and that's going to be perfect. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to pour it over. The recipe in my book actually says take a slotted spoon and just remove everything, which you could do, but it's not as perfect as putting it over a strainer like this and then pressing all the lovely juices out of it. There we go. We're going to put that back in the pan. Now we're going to stir in the cashew cream, which is going to thicken it up. Then we're going to add the spinach that I picked from the garden this morning, the chard, the spinach, the Malabar spinach, and the pomegranate seeds. So I'm going to just bring this to a simmer. And that is going to thicken up into a lovely, lovely sauce. Okay, I've turned the heat off. The heat alone is enough to wilt the, the spinach or the chard. And uh, now I'm gonna go check up on the chicken breast and see if it's ready. Okay, tell me they don't look perfect. I'm just gonna baste these in the end one more time. Uh, there should be some basting liquid left in the pan as well too. This way, the skin isn't super crispy, it's tender crispy. I don't know if that's a way to describe it. And now I'm going to serve one of these up on a plate and pour the sauce over it. Ooh. Ooh la la. Let's dive into this lion's mane succulents. Oh my god, this is so beautiful. With a uh, Yuba and spinach from the garden. Okay, that's a big mouthful. I got to get a smaller mouth. Well, actually, I got a big mouth, so I'll just stuff it all in there. Mm. 
Oh my god. This is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. Mm. Now that I finished chewing, uh, I want to wish you all a happy holiday season and a great start to your new year. Cheers. You want to try that? Oh, you like Yuba. You ate it. Oh, isn't that yummy? You got good taste. You want more? Oh, yes. Sharing is caring. Yes, good boy. I love you. Mm -hmm. Yes, happy holidays, Colin. I love you. Give mommy a kiss. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. There you go, Felix. Yeah.